Hello and welcome. In today's video, we will be looking at the new VCAT template for Clash reports in Power BI. The new report was specifically developed to manage large and complex models with thousands of clashes. I'm going to walk you through how we can use this template and what are the requirements. So let's get started right in the Amisworks. And as you can see here, I've already opened up my Clash Detective and created a first test. Now this initial part is absolutely standard. It's what you would do anytime you want to review clashes in Navisworks. Uh, as you can see, my tests created several different clashes um, th that are in different statuses and uh, some comments and, and so on. And we can step through and see the various um, clashes and the objects involved. Now what we want to do is we want to export this data and be able to load it in Power BI into our new template. So to do that, let's go to the uh, report options over here. And this is the fundamental thing that you need to remember, which is different from previous templates. So you're going to want to come here to report, and then you're going to want to check over here where it says image, you want this on, you want this activated. This will tell Navisworks to generate a PNG file for each clash, which basically represents what we would see here in the viewer and then our report is going to be able to load these images. Uh, besides this, the rest is uh, as it was with previous versions of the report. So we have individual clashes only is what we want, and we can choose if we want a single test or all tests combined, it's the same. Finally, report format must, must be XML. Now another difference uh, that you'll notice from previous versions of the template is I haven't talked about quick properties. For this template to function, we don't need to worry about quick properties. If they're there, the report will read them. If not, it's fine. Now let's go ahead and write the report. So I'm going to write the report. I'm going to choose where I want to save it. Uh, I have my, my uh, video folder. You can give it any name uh, and then save the XML file. Now we want to click Save. Now what Navisworks uh, did is if we pull up the file manager, we can see it created both a clash XML um, file as well as a clash files folder. And in this folder, if we go in, we can see it created those uh, those images. It, it looks like they're J, uh, JPGs, not PNGs. Uh, regardless, it created the various images. Uh, our report is going to be able to then um, load these images in. So let's go ahead and let's open up our uh, clash images uh, PPIT. I've already generated this template for the model that we're looking at. We're going to go ahead and open it up. Okay, so the template is opening up and as with uh, the previous clash report, we are presented with uh, the, the requirement of the clash path. So I'm just going to paste this in. Uh, so what we want is the full path, including the file name and the XML extension. Now, a thing to keep in mind is um, the report created both an XML file and a folder. We want these two to be stored in the same place. The report will basically build the uh, images path based on the XML path. If for some requirement uh, this cannot be the case in, in your specific report, you can of course tweak the report in order to go find uh, the images in the correct uh, folder. But for now, we're going to keep it simple, keep everything together, and just go ahead and uh, load up the information. So you can see here the template loaded up our clash information as well as our model information and also all the images. Now, for the most part, the layout of the clash report remains uh, the same as previous versions, but let's walk through what we have here. So basically, we have here on the bottom right, of course, first thing we see is our actual model. Uh, that has been loaded up, of course, interactive as always. And then here on the top right, we have a series of, I'm um, sorry, top left, we have a series of filters. So we can start by selecting a uh, test, and then we can go ahead and you can see that popped all the clashes into the report. And we can go ahead and filter over uh, all these different parameters, clash name, clash statuses, uh, who it was assigned to, who was approved by, and so on. Uh, also, of course, I can filter based on a different dates. Now, for now, we're just going to walk through everything. We don't need to worry about the filters. Um, 
but let's get to the actual uh, clashes. So we can see here I have my list of my clashes that have been loaded in, grouped based on the groups, if I had defined those in Navisworks. And in my model, you'll notice here things are a little different. So um, one of the major issues with very large models and reviewing clashes in Power BI uh, that we found was the connection between the selected items and the clashes themselves. So to avoid this bottleneck, what we're doing is we are skipping that element selection. So you won't see elements selected in our model itself. Uh, however, you will see the uh, markers delineating where the clashes happened. And if I want to know, uh, see the objects involved, I can just hover over the marker and this will dynamically load in the images that were exported by Navisworks. So you can see here I have the exact view that I had in the Navisworks um, software. So it's a little closer to what you would normally be interacting with in Navisworks. And then if I want some context so on to sort of which part of the project it's involved in, of course, I have the model to get that uh, context information. Now, the other thing we changed is here on the bottom left, you'll see there's some new controls. So uh, as before, we have item one and item two. Of course, these this part of the report only really works if we have a single clash selected. It only makes sense if we have a single clash selected. So what I can do is I can select uh, one of the first clashes, for example. And now here in the model, I can review where that clash happened. Uh, again, I have the image to show me exactly the elements. Uh, but also, I can review down here the information of the item one and item two. Uh, I can switch to the comments, and this will show me all the comments for this specific clash. So I can see it was initially assigned to me uh, with a comment, and then clash went under revision, and then it was approved with the various dates, of course. And finally, if I want um, an immediate uh, view of the clash, I can switch to the show image uh, view over here. So this is all done through bookmarks, basically. And this will allow me to essentially um, rapidly switch between the different clashes and review immediately the image. Uh, also, if I if I want, uh, I can uh, hover over the name of the clash here and I have a dynamic tooltip that will show me the information for the two items involved. Um, so giving me again that immediate information. So this is sort of uh, the different parts that are in play in our new report uh, for clashes. Um, this is basically a clash report that includes clash images uh, for better management, especially for larger models or very complex models that include many, many, many clashes. Here we did a very simple example, which is 15, but this will work great for several um, thousands of clashes as well. So with that, um, thank you for joining me uh, for this video and stay tuned for future videos coming uh, later on. Thank you.